Jackie, joining us now from Toronto before you uh, head out to Edmonton. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. Like, I, I'm such a fan of both of you. So I watch all of your clips online and on, on TV. So I'm just like, when am I going to get my shot to come on around the NHL? And now I'm here. I'm so excited. See, Jackie, now you know how I feel. You and EJ finally had me on NHL Networks last year during the finals. So now you know exactly how pumped up I was last year. So good to well, see you. Well, have mutual. Your check, have is, mutual. Uh, your, your check is in the mail, Jackie, for that one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, as we mentioned, though, you're obviously in Toronto right now. And as we were just talking before we started rolling, uh, we want to just get an idea of what your bubble life has been like. What has this experience been like for you so far? Well, really different than what I'm used to, right? Like a lot of my career, first off, has been in studio. Like I'm a studio host. So now I'm in this reporter role in a bubble situation where I'm like learning a lot about this role as a broadcaster on top of kind of living this weird life where I'm in a hotel and I'm allowed in the arena, but I'm, I'm not in the bubble. So I am a, on a layer outside of the bubble. Uh, but it's been crazy. I mean, I'm in an arena and there's 10, 12 people up in the media section and we're all spread out. We've got like workstations in each section. So I'll be up in one like 307 and the next closest media members over in 308. It's so weird because normally, and I'm sure you guys can relate, like when you're watching a game, you like to talk about what's happening with the people that you work with or your family or your friends. And there's none of that. Like I have, Twitter and then I have myself and I just talk to myself a lot up there while watching the game. <laughs> One of the things that I've noticed Jackie watching you in your covers like your hair is on point and it changes all the time like someone like myself I don't have to worry about hair and makeup as much but as a woman covering the game of hockey being on television um, I see KT Catherine Tappan in the chair a lot with our you know in our studio. Who's hooking up your hair and makeup? Because it's been on point being like in the bubble, but not in the bubble. Listen, I don't want to brag, but it is all me. Um, I am learning a ton about hair and makeup because we don't normally on the road, we kind of have that privilege and it's a, mm -hmm. it's a benefit of working in the business. Right. But with everything that's happening um, in the world, it's just not really a safe thing for me to be going and getting my hair and getting my makeup done and interacting with, you know, more people and then exposing myself to the possibility of maybe um, getting COVID. You were mentioning Jackie, obviously the arena is being empty. You've been a part of some really exciting or witnessing some really exciting finishes I'm curious just what's the energy been like you know obviously on the ice we've seen the product but it's got to be weird I mean I know you were there for that five overtime game between Columbus and Tampa Bay way back when like what is it like in those moments you know what I get asked that question almost daily and and I and I'm always like oh I want to give you the goods I want to tell you that it's like so incredible Mostly it's great. The hockey's great. The product on the ice is amazing, but it's not the same as being in a building full of fans during a Stanley Cup playoff game. It just isn't. But I will say this, that five overtime game, that eight period game was the most intense experience that I've had watching hockey in a building where there's nobody else ever. And I... There was a moment in between, I don't know which overtimes, but at some point where I went to get warm and grab coffee, and there was a couple of other media members with me, and we all just kind of stopped in the middle of the conversation. We're like, you guys realize that we're like three of maybe 150, 200 people that are in this building right now that can say years down the line, oh yeah, I was at one of the longest games in NHL history. So for me, that was when this whole situation sort of hit me. And I was like, I'm really lucky to be here right now. This is so crazy. And I am going to be able to tell this story to my grandkids one day. Like, oh yeah, there was a global pandemic a playoff game went eight periods and I was in the building with a handful of other people. So that game was super intense. And uh, I will say, I do enjoy hearing what the guys are saying on the ice as the game's happening, because you don't hear that on TV yeah. or when, you know, the building is full of fans. So I do enjoy that because I actually pick up on things. I'm like, oh man, like what were they just yelling at about, right? And then I'll try to figure out what it was. So that's been really interesting too.
the day of the pause for NHL games, you were on the air. I mean, I was watching NHL Network. Most people were locked into NBC, NHL, trying to just figure out what was going on. Take us through that whole day for you and, and trying to um, speak to the issues at hand and get that information in real time before that ultimate decision that games wouldn't be played. Um, so Thursday, when they decided not to play, um, my whole schedule changed and, and they actually included me in the coverage on NHL Network. And I was actually really, I felt privileged to be a part of it um, because you could feel the intensity of the moment, right? Like when all the players came out to do their media availability, that's when you knew that this is, this is something really special that's happening right now. And I know on Wednesday night, uh, a lot of people felt like it was a missed opportunity for the players and they didn't make the right decision. And there was all this criticism. And for me, when they did come to the table and say what they had to say and make their statements, they got it right. And I think that that's okay that they didn't get it right, right away. You know what I mean? Like I thought when they did do it, they said a lot of the right things, they did the right things. And for me, the big takeaway, and I know this is a long winded answer right now, but the takeaway was that everybody was really genuine. These guys didn't get up there and say, you know, everyone needs to have conversations and learn more. They said those things, but they also said, we don't have the answers. We're learning on the fly. That's why we're doing this. Absolutely. Jackie, real quick, before we let you go, there is one huge game seven that you'll be covering tomorrow. Uh, what's your take on game seven between the Flyers and the Islanders? Can I just say that part of the reason that I love what I do is because I love the drama. And when every series was at 3-1, I was like, come on, man. Like, we need some game sevens. We need nervousness. We need fan bases on edge. We need to overreact to every single call. Like, give me game seven. Uh, and I'm so excited to cover it. Um, I don't know what is going on with AV, but he's got some sort of 3-1 magic or something because this is the <laughs> first time that he has done this. He did this twice with the Rangers uh, in 2014-2015. We'll see if he can make it three. But uh, I did think the Islanders were the better team last night. Uh, they just didn't finish uh, on a lot of their chances. So we'll see. But game seven, anything can happen. That's why we love it. So uh, I'm so excited to cover game seven. Yeah. Jackie, you mentioned being a big fan of ours. We're a huge fan of yours. And I said, you, you know, you said that this role has been somewhat new for you, transitioning yeah. into the sideline role. You have done it so seamlessly. Your reports have been phenomenal. Uh, keep up the fantastic work. And thank you so much for joining the show today. This was so great. That's really so sweet of you to say thank you so much. I appreciate it. You guys are the best. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to see you both in person uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah, Jackie, I love watching you as you continue to expand your role in NHL Network. Listen, I love you even more now that I know you're just as weird as I am. You make your bed in the morning living in the hotel still. I love that. That's awesome. I know you guys got to let me go, but I got I to gotta put a bow on that because I interviewed Barry Trotz. I did this life coach segment last year, and I brought questions like life advice questions from fans, and one of them was like, Hey, Barry, making your bed in the morning, does that really lead to productivity? And Barry Trotz was like, listen, I'm not going to say that 100% if you make your bed, you're going to like achieve success, but it definitely sets you up for a productive day. And Absolutely. I was like, you know what, Barry, if you make your bed, I'm going to make my bed. So yes, I'm all about making the bed in the morning. <laughs>